that uh, how has that helped you during the week or something? So for now, there's no PPM on ground so for this week. So I'll ensure okay. it's done. Okay, thank you. Um, one more person. Um, Joseph. Joseph, can you hear me? Adama, can you hear me? Adama. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Unmute yourself and share with us what you learned from the last class. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me, Ma? Yes, very clear. Okay. In the last class, I learned how to train a team, how to conduct a train. Okay. By giving, by allocating the place of their working every day and how to use the material, how to waste the material to be applied step by step. So I also learned how to eradicate the hygiene there in the office or at home. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, the rest of you will um, probably have more time next time. Okay. So, like I said, can you can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, my name is Mrs. Elizabeth Emepa, and I'll be taking you facility cleaning and hygiene. Okay. So, um, we we have a few rules here. Okay. About um, if you have a question. You know how to, this is not your first time um, using this, so you should always raise your hands and, um, or you jot down your questions down so that you don't forget it. And when I finish um, probably my lesson and then you can, you can bring up your questions, okay? So I have Latif, I have, um, and wrote to me, I'm just going to ask both of you quickly what, what you know about cleaning. Okay, when you say facility cleaning, what comes to your mind? Latif, please go first. Can Latif hear me? Lawal, Lawal, sorry, Lawal. Okay, Afiz, do you want to go first? Afiz wrote to me, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, did you hear my question? I, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Okay, fantastic. Do you want to tell us something, a little what you know about facility cleaning and hygiene? Um, cleaning is about, um, it includes everything uh, that has to do with regular cleaning of the place and maintenance of the property. Um, management and uh, and keeping the facility uh, hygiene so that, um, Occupants or the clients uh, will not get contaminated uh, with um, uh, germs and uh, all sorts of uh, unwanted things to be in the facility. Fantastic. Thank you very much, um, Afiz. So um, the second person is Baba Tunde. Baba Tunde, can you hear me? Is Baba Tunde there? All right. So we are going to learn today about um, facility cleaning and hygiene. Uh, what it means to, to, to stay clean and healthy in our facility, in our workplace, in our homes, in our church, and um, even cleaning as an occupation, okay? So uh, each and every one of us will have what we do. And um, there's one or two things we like about the job we do, isn't it? And uh probably every year or every month you always want to try something different i be like okay maybe this year i would like to do this differently or i would like to do that differently and then if probably you could not you could not do that thing differently what are those things that are holding you back from achieving what you do okay so 
Um, the purpose and objective of getting it right the first place, the first time. Why, why, why do we need a facility clean? Why do we have to make it clean in the first place? Our home, or, um, as a company, okay? To promote quality service, quality service delivery and enhance efficiency, use of resources by doing right thing, by right thing the first time, okay? So how, how can we do the right thing for the first time? By paying attention to details, um, improving customer satisfaction. Every place we walk, everything we do, we're doing it for a purpose of satisfying some certain people which we work for, right? Uh, and it is important that we get their own satisfaction because if our customers are not satisfied, there is no way um, they would want to renew her contract or they would want you to want us to work with them again. Okay, to save money, to save time, and also to improve our health and safety. Okay, um, what is right, right? What is right uh, by, as defined by the customer is what you do, how you do it, when and where you do it, okay? Uh, having a standard best practice, a quality, the standard of something being measured against other things of a kind, of a similar kind, the degree of excellency of something, that's the quality, the, the quality we put into her work, okay? Is us doing what is right, okay? So um, for us to get something right, there's always a principle. Let me say, for example, you want to tie a shoelace. You cannot just um, tie a shoelace and then uh, say you've tied it, right? It has to, you have to go through a process, okay? You have to go through a process for you to get it right. And the same thing also comes in into cleaning and every other thing we do as, as, um, as facility managers. It starts with you. If you want to teach someone something, you have to learn it yourself, all right? Personal accountability, self-evaluation, and reality check. A passionate I desire to learn, improve, okay? We, we ourselves, we need, to, we need to have the desire to learn something because you know that your objective is to, is to give your customer satisfaction. Before you can pass that out to those who work with you, you have to do it right yourself, okay? You have to have the, the desire to learn new things. You don't just stick to those things that you've known before, okay? And the focus, so why, why, why are you doing all this? Your focus is to ensure your customers are satisfied, okay? Improvement follows the discovery, discovery and application of laws principles and best known practice that govern our outcome, outcome of a specific endeavor. So all these things, all these things we do, all our improvement, all our actions to learn everything to put our customer satisfaction are all governed by a principle, all right? Okay, so all these are principles of getting it right. So providing excellent customer service is key to successful facility manager implementing customer best practice, create improved customer satisfaction, develops a business culture of superior services. Providing excellent customer service is key to successful facility management, okay? Why, why is it key? Why is, why is delivering, having a good delivery, why is it key to you as a facility manager? Why is it key to you as a business owner? Maybe you, you run a cleaning company. Why is providing an excellent service? Why is it key to you? Because if you do that, you will have more clients. Your customers will be happy to renew you. They'll be happy to want you to work for them more time. But if you don't deliver an excellent service, nobody would want you anymore, okay? Nobody would, everybody would be like, no, I'm not sure that cleaning company is, is, um, is best for me. A customer is the most important visitor in the premises. So wh whenever your customer comes in, you don't argue with them. You don't interrupt with them. This is what they want. You deliver it, and then they say, okay, I like this job, or no, I don't like this job. Whenever, I come, whenever you have to go back to a certain job, and because your customer keeps complaining, 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 it's because they are not satisfied. 
And what could that cost you? It could cost you your job. Maybe as a, as a, as a, as a, as a facility manager in a particular company, or maybe you, you, you run a cleaning company, okay? If you don't do it and do it right, like we've said in the first place, you might lose it and then at the end of it, you don't have any job to hold. So always know that providing excellent customer service is key for your own success, for your own work, okay? Okay, you see now this is an almost the same thing. Every time a customer comes into contact with any aspect of business, this is an opportunity to form an impression. This moment can turn out to be a moment of mystery or a moment of magic, okay? Let's say, for example, you as a facility manager, how often do you do an inspection on the jobs your custodians have carried out? They've done cleaning and all that. How often, how, maybe your, 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 your customers decide to come out and just um, take a walk around the building. Let's see what your people are doing. Ah, uh, um, uh, these people have been cleaning. They are in charge of our cleaning and everything everywhere. But, and they decide to take a, 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 a walk around and then they start picking things. Is that the kind of is that the kind of facility manager you want to be, or the type that whenever they are walking around, you can you can be proud that oh I know that these things are in, in order. I know that um, uh, what my team have done, they've done something good. I don't need to shake. I don't need to start telling someone to quickly go and sweep or or do something behind. Okay, so it is very very important that we should be ready whenever um, our customers come in at any time, or our clients, or our they come in anytime to come and um, check our work, okay? So now for us to run a proper facility, to be a, a good a proactive facility manager or even a proper cleaning, man, uh, um, cleaning company, what do we need to do? What do we need, right? Let me quickly ask you, um, Alabara, if, I'm, if, if, if you're not driving, why, why are you here? Why are you here? What, what brought you to this class? Unmute yourself if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Did anyone hear my question? Yeah, I can hear your question. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 that's that. We can hear you now. Okay. The question is why, 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 why my... are you here? Yes, yes. What, what brought you to this um, FMMC training class? I, uh, do my accountant, I work in uh the international firm the need for me to have a change of uh environment as far as our career is concerned and i find it uh what that facility uh uh management the imagine feet that uh one can definitely contribute to so the to the environment some of learning acquisition of skill and all these kind of things uh, is necessary. So, so far, so including this training, I think uh, I make a good choice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much um, for, for what you've said. So out of all the participants listening to me now, is there anyone who has a training company? If you do, just omit yourself and, and say yes or something. I just want to ask a few questions. Um, sometimes I run a cleaning, a small cleaning firm, so you can, I think I can be able to ask a little bit of a question. Okay, thank you. So, um, may I know your name? Lamela Afiz wrote to me. Afiz wrote to me. Okay, yeah. so um, as a manager, okay, what do you do differently with your custodian? Um, self improvement. Self improvement. Yes. And how do you do that? By indulging them in training. Oh, fantastic! Time. Are you sure you did not check my slide? Um, no, I had. I run a cleaning firm. That's why I was able to answer you. We okay. do that 
um, quarterly, oh. just to give you what is right and what we have been doing and the expectation of the client. That is that is that is very very fantastic. That is just what I want to hear. And why do we train our building custodians? Why what, what do we train them on? What do we train them on? You you you've just said um, to check what is right. Okay, to check um, um, where they are in terms of your SLA. Probably if they are doing what is right, if it's uh, the service they are delivering is what the customers have asked yeah. for. Okay. So what else do we train them for? What else do we train? Now, not you personally, I'm just, I'm just training the question to the class, okay? What else do we train our custodians for? Any other person? Can I go? Yes, please. Okay, um, good evening. I would say attitude. Okay. Attitude and how they relate with, you know, the occupiers of any facility in which they're cleaning. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't get your name. Ifeolua. Okay, Ifeolua. Is that her? Yes, because okay. for me, attitude is very key. Okay. Um, it's one thing to clean, but how you approach and manage manage the people spaces in which you are cleaning also tells a lot. Because so you because you can do a good job, mm -hmm. but if you have a From terrible that. attitude, yeah, it will just mess up how you do. So I would, I mean, that's what I do with my team here. From time to time it's not just okay i know how to clean but how do you approach them even if they call your attention to something how do you respond and not feel like um you are being defensive mm -hmm. fantastic that's very correct okay if you allow if former i see your hand help yes good evening yes good evening can you hear me very well your, your audio is clear all right so one thing we should train them for though i'm not into that business is also their personal hygiene because it matters a lot. Because you can't be cleaning a place and then you look dirty. In fact, no customer would take it from you. So the cleanliness begins with you, just like we say that in pig milk, it is in you. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. So, Alabara, I see your hand up. Is it there? Okay, Tim Tapa, you can go, please. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, um, anybody can actually clean. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do anything, you know. But when it is called um, uh, a corporate effort, then this need for uh, in, uh, training in alignment to of every individual involved, you know, to the singular goal and the singular purpose of the establishment. Because for the establishments to, you know, there are diverse um, cleaning services everywhere, but they don't do things the same way. Yeah. So what stands you out? What stands, what exactly is it that you are you are selling as a cleaning uh company to the to the customer? You must be able to inculcate that into all um and the workforce, so that everybody does the same thing, and then the 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 the, the customer sees the um, the attitude, the complaint, the the culture of the complaint in all that works. I mean that 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 is part of that uh, um, of, of that organization. So that, but if there is no training, if there is no alignment, if there is no communication as regards this, everybody will do whatever it is you know that they, that they, that they want or they know how to do. and that will not all go well for the organization thank you very much thank you samuel okay please can you hear me very well okay so my my take about that is just about, about I, I almost the same line with um, what the last just said mm -hmm. um every organization should have a vision vision that is very clear and then should also call values that they intend to communicate, uh, whether they're selling products, whether they're selling services. And um, those core values and visions, the aim, the, the aim should be to impact the lives of the users of those products and services. And therefore, to be able to achieve that, you are using your custodians as drivers 
of impacting that um, experience on your on your customers or clients, as it were. And so it becomes very necessary, therefore, for the organization to itemize or outline their core values, outline their vision statement, outline their goals and objectives, so they are custodians, and then also um, help the custodians to know what are their stake, what, what, what is in it for them themselves, so that they can take ownership of any situation in the absence of anybody around. They should know that this is their own business. We should be able to train custodians or anybody working on our system to understand that he is working for himself, to have a sense of personal interest in the services and the standard that is listed out to be achieved. Because he knows that he is going to be promoting himself at the end of the day. He's going to shoot himself in the foot if he fails um, to deliver on the, on the KPIs that are set, that are set up for him. So when you train people and you only tell them to deliver, 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 and you don't tell them what delivering will cost to their lives, then it, it becomes one-sided th thing. We should train people to know, create impact, meet the expectation or exceed the expectation of the client, but also know that this is what is going to happen to you when you do this. So that way they take ownership. So we train people to take ownership, train people to, um, to own up the, the failure and the success of the business together as partners. That's my view. Okay, thank you very much. I'll quickly take Adama and Ayola. Please, you have just one 30 seconds or one minute each. Please, Adama. Is Adama there? Okay, um, Ayo, Ayola. All right, so apart from, um, can you hear me? Yes, something different from what everybody has said. Is that what you want to tell us? Now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, apart from training them on the SLA, it's also very important to train them on time management, the being time conscious and how to undo the cleaning um, materials and equipment very well. Thank you. Allah Rabba. Something different from what everybody has said. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I think the, the basic thing is when you want to enter this uh, area of discipline, you should know the only people who rented this. And when I say people oriented with all their capacity, your attitude towards customer, your attitude towards uh, your staff, uh, must be tailored along the goal and objective of the entity, the family around. That's just summary of what I say. Okay, thank you everyone for your beautiful contributions. If you read through this slide, you will notice that uh, you've mentioned almost everything what I have there. And then another very important thing is training them how to use the right PPE to do the right job, okay? Uh, we have different PPEs for different places um, different, and uh, different tasks to be carried out. So it is very, very important for them to understand that also, okay? Okay, so, so uh, would, would out of the contributions that have been said, we've also talked about what needs to be, what they need to train on. Um, I would just also have to read that um, cleaning techniques for PPE tools, uh, something of cleaning products, documentations, which is very, very important. Another important thing is uh, personal hygiene, okay? Um, if you yourself as a manager, as a supervisor, or as a owner, you, you, you're not practicing a good hygiene. I'm not, I don't see how you want to teach the people under you how to practice a good hygiene, okay? So as much as possible, what we also need to treat them, because a custodian, they come in contact with different people. They come in contact with different gems and all sort of, if they are not properly dressed, okay? Let's even assume they're properly dressed, okay? How well do they take care of themselves after, after they are cleaning, after everything they need to do? 
So it is very, very important to emphasize on it that they should always have a good and proper hygiene by bathing after, after work or, or changing their uniform. They, they shouldn't, you just see some people, they will have just one uniform and then they, they sweat on it all day. They, you, they wear it and then the next day again, there is no washing, there is no sunny or something. Okay. Give them conducive clothes that they can walk on, not the one they would use and sweat and sweat and sweat and they would start um, feeling uncomfortable. Okay, we can also train them on change management. Okay. Mm, yes, okay. I'll um, target a small number of risk practice in their workplace. Okay, so what, what does that mean? What, what are those risks associated to a particular tax that they are going to do? Maybe, for example, they, you've asked them to go and clean in um, maybe somewhere there, there, there are a lot of heights or something. Well, what's, what's going to happen to them? So you can train them on even having a toolbox talk on what they need to do, how they need to do, carrying out their tax and all, okay? Okay, so we've defined cleaning, removing dust, unwanted dust from um, not only dust anyway materials um in an unwanted place it could be in an office it could be in a table it could be in the kitchen anywhere okay so why do we clean mm, was not spoken here lekki lekki can you hear me Hello. Okay, who else can hear me and can tell Hello. us why? Okay, yes. Yes. I have What's the why question, madam? Why? why do we clean? Why why do we clean? Well, well yes. cleaning. Why, why do we clean now? Basically, the reason why we clean is to have a healthy living because things that constitute dirty environment and those are the items that we will remove when we are cleaning they are injurious to our health so basically reason why we clean is to have orderliness of our room and to have a healthy environment okay um anyone else want to say something different from what you have said Anybody? Okay. Yes. Hello. Um, so make Hello. Yes, the lady first, yeah. please. Okay, okay. So make uh my okay, so make our environment habitable for and uh, yeah. okay. Uh, habitable, conducive uh, and, uh, Uh, free from jam. Okay. Free from gems. Okay. Who else wants to say something? Um, someone was someone was saying something earlier. Yeah. <coughs> Hello. Yes, you can go ahead quickly. Hello. All right. This is Joseph. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, the reason why we uh. Cleaning is to make the uh, the use of it in any organization, maybe the worker to perform effectively. Because uh, when the environment is not conducive in an office or in any place, if the place is not conducive, you find it difficult to operate at uh, the highest level you ought to have operate. So I think cleaning help the workers in any of your organization to to perform. Okay, um, Taufik, Taufik, you want to say something? Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. Thank you. Good, um, yeah. Yes. Good evening. We we in the, in 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 we we clean to we clean to prevent germs, bacteria, and diseases, and also to preserve good health. Are you yes. with me? Okay. 
Do you hear what yes. I said? Okay. Taufik. Hello. Hello, ma. I said, basically, we clean to prevent diseases, bacteria, and infections, and also to preserve good health. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Taufik. Samuel, has someone yes. said something? Yes, so I just wanted to say that, um, I hope you, you are hearing me. So I yes. just wanted to say that, um, just like in any other aspect of uh, facility management services, uh, cleaning will all together, um, can, can all together come up to build up a premium uh, value on our products and services. Uh, the environment from where services or products are being churned out to the end users can also determine uh, how the people uh, place um, their or value that product and services. So when we clean properly, it adds to the value of our product and services. And that's what FM is all about. So it increases our value of services because it gives us an edge. Okay, thank you very much, Samuel. Okay, thank you, Samuel. So Fidelis here yes, said three cognitive reasons is for safety, health, and environment. Okay, that is um, also that is why we claim that is from Fidelis. Okay, so I can tell you that we can continue like different reasons and different um, yeah reasons why we claim. Like what Samuel said earlier, he said um, I like that word value. Okay um to add value to our clients to add value to their workspace to add value to our home our church or wherever it is we administer these um services okay it is very very important so um cleaning method okay so olusha i know also said Cleaning saves us cost on repair and damages on some of our assets. That's very good, okay? Because accumulative of dust on a particular machine can knock the engine and something bad, it, it stops working, okay? But uh, when you clean, maybe you take away dust this day, take away dust every now and then. Now, any other assets we could have that um, if we don't do a proper cleaning. Now, the difference between doing cleaning and doing the proper cleaning. We all agree on that. We can, we can decide to just um, clean the surface of our laptop, for example, or her phone, but not um, taking away the, the dirt or, or maybe doing line by line in, inside the, um, the, the pads, okay? Cleaning it line by line and ensuring that all those doors and everything are out. If you don't do a proper cleaning, you are also wasting your time trying to say maybe I'm cleaning or something. So as much as possible, when we are talking about cleaning, let's also put it in our mind that we are talking about a proper and detailed cleaning in, in wherever we find ourselves. Chineye said a clean environment helps to protect you all from various diseases and helps to save our money spending on medical bills. Thank you, Chineye. Um, they say health is wealth. If we are healthy, we'll be able to save ourselves all those things. And one way to do that is by carrying out, again, a proper cleaning in a safe and hygiene manner, okay? So first, we need to understand what are we going to clean? What do you want to clean? Is it just a space? What kind of space? What, what kind of cleaning are you going to do there? Is it just checking the cobwebs or just um, seeing the floor? We need to know what needs to be cleaned. The frequency of cleaning and R restriction imposed by the specification. Let's say, for example, you want to go and clean a confined space. Okay, a confined space is a restricted area. How often do you need to go there? How many hours are you supposed to, to, to spend there? Let me quickly add um, 
Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, if, if you are going to clean a confined space, what kind of PPE are you going to take along? You tell us the kind of PPE, then the um, Chinese will tell us the kind of, um, the kind of cleaning equipment we would have. Do you understand my question? I can't hear you if you can hear me. Isa Abu Bakr, can you hear me? Okay. So why they are thinking about the answer? Let's uh, just continue with our cleaning work method statement. So the Expected time taken clean, okay. The quality outcome for for some of us who run a cleaning coin and then um, it's me. Okay, please have explain now. I want you to clean this particular building. They didn't tell you the expectation. They didn't tell you what to look out for. And then you, as a cleaning company, because you've gotten a job, you hurried into it. You didn't ask them any question. You didn't ask them that, oh, what are your expectations after this job? What do you need us to do differently? Uh, what, 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 is, there any, is there any specific thing? But then you went there, you did your best, you went in with your boys, you make sure they cleaned and, and then did all their best. But probably there's somebody in particular who, is, um, who just decided to do an inspection and check around and notice that you did not clean the, the, the switch, the light switch. You did not clean the curbs, the window frame, okay? So it is very important that we ask our clients or our customers what are their expectations, okay? So another thing is the safety precaution to be adopted, including the use of personal protective equipment and emergency procedures, okay? There is very, very important, very, very important the kind of um, safety we carry out when um, carrying out our... Uh, the safety precautions we put in place when carrying out our tax. Okay. So um, individual or zone cleaning. So what does that mean? Within a given area of a building, uh, um, let's say you have an employee of five to 10 persons. You have five, you have 10 employees. You don't just put them all of them that, oh, all of you go and clean a particular space. So you, you share them zone by zone so that you can know who is going to be responsible for a certain thing, who is going to be responsible for a certain thing, um, certain other tasks, okay? These duties generally include trash removal, dusting, dusting restroom cleaning, polishing, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, and other duties as assigned. You know who you've assigned a particular space and a particular tax to do, okay? Another important thing in cleaning is checklist. How, how many of us know what a checklist is and what it helps us to do? Anybody? A checklist. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Who is speaking, please? Ifoma. Ifoma. Okay. A checklist is actually what you use to check on those jobs that has been assigned. Okay. And also it consists, it also contains the timing when those jobs are to be rechecked and to make sure that they are done. Okay. Thank you for my, are you done? Please. Okay. Can Thank I you. Say for something? Yes. Is that Samuel? Who's that? Can I say something? That is Tayo. Mr. Sorry? Ayo. Okay. Mr. Okay. Ayo. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. The, the importance of checklist is for you to know area you are going to cover. Because if you just go without your checklist, there's there, there, there's possibility of you not doing a thorough check. Because with the checklist, on the checklist, there are items and things for you to watch out and to look out for. 
So if you are going for inspection or for anything, or for any job, even cleaning, you're supposed to go with your checklist and check, okay, this and this, has it done? What is the state of this? What and what do I need to add? So when you go with your checklist, is a pointer, is a direct, it will direct you, you know, it just is a guide to guide you on what, whatever you want to do during that period, whether inspection, whether cleaning, deep cleaning, weekly, or whichever cleaning you want to do. So okay. the input is very, very important for us to do that checklist. Okay, thank you very much, um, Mr. Ayo. So, um, Samuel Joseph, let's hear from you. Okay, so my take is that just like um, what my brother just said, there, so it, it, it should contain all the uh, customer expectations on the contract signed. Um, at the point when the, con uh, when the any company has signed a contract with the client, the client must have, especially when you are dealing with professionals, even when you are not dealing with a professional, you must have been able to help the client understand what he or she is looking for. And then you are timeline, like the, uh, somebody I've said um, earlier. So you outline all of those things and so the list will now contain all of those expectations per hour, expectations per day, expectations per week. Now, the other time you ask a question, within a particular space, how many people should you put in there? All of these will be, you can only make those decisions having understood the time frame required for an XYZ kind of thing to be done. Uh, in a busy locations, in um, an e tree, for example, you walk into an e tree hall where customers are sitting down and eating. The time and urgency of cleaning that place will be different from when you are cleaning any other place. You walk into a banking hall, the kind of traffic taking place there will determine the number of goods you send in to clean that thing and get out of that place without causing um, and making the entire place look rowdy traffic. or um, you know, destructive. Are you getting the point? So you look at the, 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 the environment and what are expected in that environment. Then you send in the right number of people to clean within a specific time, which you have agreed with the client that this is how this place should be handled so that you can free the environment. Your cleaners leave that place for the users, the customers to come in and find the place neat and neatly and used. So you should understand the timing of that operations within that environment that form the checklist for you to follow through. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's Samuel Joseph, right? That's right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we have um, tax or, or, or um, teams cleaning. Okay. So um, <coughs> in particular space, like Joseph has said, we have different tools and equipment for cleaning different places. Let's say for our city room as a common space, okay, we, we understand that we can use maybe a, a mopping stick, a sweeper, and a dustpan, and probably a bucket of water. But this is not the same, and maybe one or two persons can clean it, depending on the, the, the size of the city room. But let's say we are going to clean a warehouse, which is very dirty. What are we going to need? I probably need a scrubbing machine. I probably need like um, six to seven persons to clean it. We might probably need um, a buffing machine and many more other things, okay? So what am I saying in essence? We have different tools for different tasks that has been, you cannot use a buffing machine. You cannot use a, you cannot use a scrubbing machine in the toilet, can we? No, we can't. No. No, we can't. So, so we have different tools for restroom and different tools for classroom. The, the mopping bucket and the mopping and the mopping, um, mopping sticks we use in the, in the office area should not be the same most times we use in the eating area. Should not be the same we should use in the in the in the restroom as well. Okay. Are we are we are we together? So as much yes, as possible, yes, we are. as much as possible, let us let us let us um um create teams for our work, uh our cleaning jobs we have for different places. 
So we'll talk about cleaning coats and cleaning, color coats and cleaning. Um, so I, I just need two persons that would tell us the color codes, tell us a particular color in cleaning and uh, what it means, okay? So I need three volunteers. Oh, I'll just choose. Okay, someone wants to say something. Should I choose? Okay, so Joseph Beleke, can you hear me? Okay, you, you want to choose or I should speak? You can go ahead. Please tell us your name. Okay, I'm, let me know if it's what you mean. Is that what you said? Yeah, let me know if it's with me. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, some color codes and cleaning, uh, which involves um, color red, uh, yellow, blue, green. And um, color red is for uh, toilet and bathroom. Yeah. While yellow is for um, where we keep um, maybe somewhere like medical equipment. We can use the medical equipment where we have the wardrobes. Uh, blue is for general cleaning. Maybe you want to clean um uh windows, and um green is for mostly for kitchen. So. Okay, thank you, Afis. So I need one more person to tell us the reason why we we have these colors, these are uh, cleaning materials for different places. But what what does it help us to do? What does it improve? What does it What's the, okay, I, I think I have two hands up. Okay, um, Taufik, then I'll take some more. Taufik. Okay. <clears throat> the, the color code is purposely to have, a, to maintain a standard because if, if all the, if you, if you don't have a color code, we, we will be using, the one we are using for toilet, for office or for, for room. So we, with the help of the color code, it, it indicates that this one is for toilet, this one is for room, this one is for office, this one is for all sort of things like that. That's just it. It's a guidance. Okay. Guidance. Guidance. Thank you, okay. ma'am. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Um, some more. Okay. Um, for me, first and foremost, I like to establish my my different perspective to color code. And that would be that uh, it is um, is arguable anyway. But my perspective is that in terms of labeling um, um, some of these tools, uh, I think it might also be peculiar to an organization, either the client or the cleaning company. A particular company can decide to label green for uh, for or blue for for toilets and label red for somewhere else. I think that it wouldn't be a one size um, a, a one size uh, one size fits all. So it should also be something that is flexible. Whatever organization choose to label a particular tools uh, for a particular cleaning zone uh, that is peculiar to them, they now identify that and make use of it. So it shouldn't be like red must be flat alone because some other people will have another perspective about red compared to the way you think. So having said that, I think that is the only thing that is different. Otherwise, we need all of that to make sure that we don't attract um, danger from the other environments into this other environment that are more critical. So it's better to keep color so that we can manage um, each of those environments within uh, a workplace uh, effectively and control the hazard in those areas. Properly. Thank you very much. Control the hazard. So Amon, Amon Tola said, um, helps to prevent cross-contamination. That's very correct, okay? Um, so out of all these things, how, in all these things we've, uh, we've mentioned why we use different colors and everything to summarize it, to make our work easier, um, to make our work effective, to prevent uh, contamination and help us stay organized, okay? So how can we, how can we have best health best practice in cleaning okay so do we get do we get that cleaning in health cleaning for health best practice 
What are those things we need to put in place for us to have the best practice while carrying out our cleaning, while telling our custodians to carry out their cleaning, okay? So um, the first one says choose safer products. It is very important. This is Nigeria. Okay, most of our most of our most of our cleaning materials to be realistic, something we fabricate from our backyard. As much as possible, let us let us learn to use let us learn to use chemicals that are less toxic, um, third party certified. That is either by NASDAQ by um, Sun and 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 so okay. Um, Paper products and soaps use easy to clean. Reduce quantities of chemicals, minimize exposure and dilute properly. Disinfect only in target areas. We like to, we like to, we like to say, um, majority of our surgeons, they will say, oh, God, that chemical, they work fast. Now that one to make the job, they're all right. And then you as a boss, you went ahead to buy them that particular chemical because you know that it's that chemical that will make them do the job. What understanding do they have on the chemical? What understanding do you yourself have on the chemical? Those materials items they are using, how often do you go through the user's manual to understand what they are doing? Or because you know that um, if you just put one cup of, cup of um, O4 acid, which is acid, for example, and then um, everything will be all right. You just see somebody um, using the acid, diluting it, no proper PPE, nothing, okay? As much as possible, let us choose safer products in our workplace. So even what we are introducing to our custodians, okay? Okay, so we'll take a five minute break. By 6.05, uh, we would come back. Then we'll come and talk about um, continuing on this uh, minimizing disinfectants use and substances we use for our cleaning. Is that okay? Are we all back? The audio is good now. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Oh, my video is still muted. Uh, okay, so. Um, minimizing disinfectant use okay so we talked about um chemical earlier diluting it we talked about um uh, uh what was it called now manufacturers we talked about that manufacturers instructions okay let's say for example jig and then um how often do we read this how often do we do we point out all this to our custodians? Um, you want to you want to mop a particular space. You have a, a, a bucket of water. How many cover of the of the of the jig or of the liquid soap are you expected to use? How often do you do that properly? Do you just turn it upside down? I'm sure on everything we have, there's 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 a um, manufacturer's instruction. Just like when you go to the pharmacy, you get a drug, and then the, the, the prescription says two in the morning, two in the evening. I am sure you cannot go by your own self and use theory in the morning and theory in the night because you feel if you use it properly, it would work. You would not. Even sometimes you have to read the you would have to read the instruction on the paper even after what's the probably the pharmacist would have asked you to use it. Also just want to read it and just to know. The same thing goes also into our cleaning materials, okay? The chemicals, the, everything we use, everything we use to carry out attacks. It is very, very important that we follow the manufacturer's instruction. We train again, we train our users on how to use it. Don't abuse it. And don't underuse it and don't overuse it, okay? If you are supposed to use a full cap, use a full cap. If you are supposed to use less than a full cap, use less than a full cap because everything has different composition that makes it what it is. So um, the same thing as uh, apply to cleaning materials. Uh, what are those things we use? What, what are those things we use in cleaning? 
what consideration do you put in place of when getting our 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 cleaning materials okay cost effective okay um reduce chemical use we've talked about that minimize water use prevent injury okay so this is microfiber prevent um, injuries chemical exposure back strain accidents effective reduce death and how many of us know those dog now you see this thing like a super can you see my screen this particular one that has a blue head up here you use it you use it for cleaning also as well it it is um how do i say it now it's less less toxic right it's less toxic when i say toxic sometimes you don't have to be in contact with water and all because you can just um, carefully use it to just wipe. it's just something like like wipes okay you can just use it to clean your color space depending again on where you are using it um green cleaning products so all these are just products you can use for cleaning your space and uh, um how it can be used okay we've talked about planning cleaning schedule the simplest way to keep a place reliably clean stick to a schedule which is what we need to have in our in our um what what, what do we call this the checklist we spoke about checklist earlier so those things we need to do in our checklist all right okay so we we also have the clean mm -hmm. we also have the cleaning rules okay make make every move count use the right tools it is very very important if you want to sweep an office space, you can use a sweeper or a brush. Don't go ahead and take a broom. Just imagine hazard, okay? That can also bring hazard to the, 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 the user and also more doors to the, um, what they call the occupant in the particular space. So let's always use the right, right tools for the right places, okay? So you have it all there, the cleaning rules. Okay, so cleaning equipment and products. Um, what are those things we use in cleaning? Those that have been mentioned earlier: brush, scrubbing brushes, soft brush, brooms, hard brush, brooms, brushes, and um, wet mop, sweeper, disposable mops. Uh, name them. We have different cleaning method, uh, different cleaning equipment and products. Again, in different places for different type of cleaning we want to carry out. So when you are considering buying some equipment, what, what, what are those things you put into consideration when you are getting your equipment? You need to consider the light availability of the product. You need to consider the energy used, okay? Um, the, the cleaning, the noise. You don't have to go and have a vibrating machine in the workspace, then you decide to use it and the whole place is vibrating because you are doing your cleaning and they would ask you what's going on Ah, we are cleaning so you need to also put that into consideration the energy use also how how, how often is it is it does this consume a lot of light is it that after three months you will not be is it sustainable let me just put it that way is it sustainable don't get something because you want to impress your customers or your clients they get something you know you cannot continue using anymore all right so what are those mechanical equipment uh we have automatic scrubber we have floor blow polishing machine we have the vacuum sweeper we have the carpet sponsor clean carpet shampoo carpet dryer carpet plier. so you don't have to have all these equipment again according to the kind of jobs or according to the kind of space you you clean you get your equipment and don't forget the factors to consider when you are selecting this equipment don't just try to impress 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 your clients by getting some lot of um, machines that you will not be able to use as much as possible you also need to consider the ergonomy of the users okay 
um, maybe they have to start bending to use the machine or something. You need to put that into consideration because um, it is very important. If after a time someone is bending to use a particular machine, over a year, you just let the person particularly just become like this because of the machine you're giving to him or her to do the job, which you did not put her into consideration when getting it. Okay, so um, another thing we need to talk about is chemical usage. How maybe, what kind of chemicals do you use for cleaning? What do you know about the chemicals and how well do you train your, your staff on using the chemical? We have so lot of um, substance chemicals, hard chemicals that we use while carrying out our tasks. How well do we ourselves know these chemicals before even asking um, the hand users are custodian to 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 use this um, to use this to carry out the attacks. Okay, it is very very important. He said, don't use chemicals if you haven't properly been trained. Like I said, you need to know it. You need to you need to understand this. You need to know how it works very well before giving it to your custodian to use. Another thing is always pack always put food and packaging away before chemical usage. Okay, let's not expose. Food or um, high terms that we know that the chemicals can contaminate. Okay, let's always isolate it far away from from. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's always isolate it far away from any other person. And if if, if possible, have a have a have a cupboard and keep it inside it and lock it up so that nobody could use it. Another important thing is labeling. Use according, use only according to manufacturer's label. Okay. Um, always make sure there is a proper labeling attached to a container. In this same country, Nigeria, I, I see a lot of white bottles, and inside that bottle is chemical that is inside. No labeling, nothing. And then someone will just buy it, and then you just gonna keep it. Another staff like me who did not know it's chemical you have in there might accidentally go and drink it. What have I done? What have you done? So when we are getting when we are getting all these chemicals for you, let's get proper chemicals that have good labeling. Okay, let's let's get chemicals where we can know where to locate their SDS. What is MSDS? Uh, material safety data sheet, which has all the composition of the chlorine of the whatever chemical you use in your in your workspace to tidy up your place. Okay, always store chemicals safely away from food. Keep chemicals safely secured at all times, like I've explained. Then um, keep chemicals in their original container. Maybe you want to go and walk somewhere. And you, like I've explained, if you're if you are turning some from the original bottle into another bottle, please try as much as possible to label it. This is chlorine. This is O4 or something. Store chemical according to the direction of the label. Very important. And that of course, we don't, we don't put we don't put consideration into user's manual again because we feel like ah uh, like, now they they take one now here we they we now we they use them. It is very important because they who have done it, they know what they've put into it. So it's very very important that we follow the user's um manual. Okay, so cleaning process, taking out trash, um, putting back a uh, uh, lining her doors bin. Okay, then um. How, how do we how do we carry out our cleaning basically from dusting to trash to mopping of the floor to um the hedges are you are you the type that when your people say they've cleaned and then you just check on you see that they've cleaned we need to also look beyond all those um hidden spots that both you and i would not see but only them our customers who just come all of a sudden and just say that eh you see that back that back have not been cleaned for for, for, for five months or something like that. So let us um, look behind all the furnitures. Let them, don't just clean around. Let them lift up things by cleaning, okay? Move things, okay, if possible, okay? And then inspect the room properly, report any needed repairs, correct deficiencies. Is the room ready for use, okay? So let, us, let them carry out a detailed cleaning, dry cleaning, how to use a dry mop, how to use a wet mop. We all know. So what kind of other mop can we use? This sweeper. You can see my screen. You can see this three, three broom, um, uh, brush, uh, what's it called? Sweeper, okay? That's the reason I can call it. Okay, can you see them? One, two, three. 
those are those are other kind of room that we can use to clean the floor properly to sweep the floor properly without adding water without and eliminating completely the the dust okay still talking about cleaning method refers to clearing the way house dust uh, mistakes usually made when dusting so so there are a lot of us that we just do poof, poof, poof. we just dust from up to down and then we dust the place okay Using a feather, uh, this tool simply to pray dust from one surface to another. Okay. Um, you want to impress that thing that has the, 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 the broom. Uh, what's the broom? No broom now. Um, just something like a feather, okay? Then you can just like this. It looks very, you don't have to use your hand. Those are sometimes it spreads the, the dusty table, it spreads it all out, okay? Overlooking eating or air conditioning vent, dry dusting, spray polish directly on furniture because you want to make the table shine and then you just do right on the table. Instead of putting it inside the napkin and using it to clean the surface, you put it right on the table and then you put some certain marks on the table. Forget to change or clean your vacuum duster. Okay, so all these are very important too. we need to put into consideration and look out for, okay? Um, also, we, we still talk about um, stripping. Floor stripping refers to completely removing old wax, soil, and debris found on the floor. This is usually one of the most labor-intensive and time-consuming jobs in the professional cleaning industry. Sometimes we, we use all this machine. You can see the young man there using the machine to um, scrub the floor just to ensure that the old place is looking so shiny and and um, clean. So what are those mistakes cleaning personnel make when stripping the floor? What, what are those mistakes we make, okay? Uh, we just pick three. Learning, on, learning the skills on your customer's floor. <laughs> stripping the floor is a learning skill. Not knowing the floor type, not having all the tools necessary and on hand before starting the job. Um, not allowing for proper dual time, not using a deformer with a wet or dry vacuum. So. Excuse me. All in the name of trying to impress our, all in the name of trying to impress our, our, our customers, we made, we made some errors. So let us go back and uh, look at those things we do that are not correct and start doing them correctly. The success of a facility manager lies in the, in his or her own hand. Okay, because if you, if you, if you deliver a good service. You are doing well. Not, not a good service. I'll rephrase that. If you deliver a quality service, you are doing well. If you deliver a good service, you are trying. But as much as possible, we are required as facility managers to, to deliver a quality service. Okay. So, excuse me. Let us try as much as possible to not be the type of, um, to not be the type of facility manager or type of um, company owners that try to say, eh, that they try, share that company, that they try, that they try, they do their best. No, they are doing well. Oh, let your client mention you with full hard. Oh, that, that company, I recommend them, okay? So now um, let's talk about hygiene. How can we practice hygiene in our workspace, in our homes, among ourselves? A set of practices performed for the prevention, preservation of health, conditions and practices that helps to maintain health and prevent the spread of diseases. We, there are a lot of places we can practice hygiene in the kitchen, bathroom, and toilet. So, routine cleaning of all subsites and surface reduces the risk of spread of germs. Okay, so. Hygiene, basically, just like what we learned in our schools, well, those things we know, is for us to stay healthy, for us to stay clean, okay? So, what are the requirements of hygiene personnel, okay? Health status, illness and injury, cleaner, personal cleanliness, personal behavior, when we are clean. 
as an hygiene person, you're expected to have a good health status, okay? Um, stay away from illness and injuries. Personally, you should be clean. Like, I know we cannot be 100% clean, but that we should be clean. Our custodian, please. When people, when important people are standing near them, they don't need to move back because of the pools, okay? So as much as possible, personal cleanliness and personal behavior. I know earlier we spoke about attitude. We train our people about attitude, okay? Just as we train them on attitude, we also need to train them also on personal behavior and cleanliness, okay? So, um, importance of good personal hygiene. Um, it reduces communicable diseases, okay? Because when we are healthy, when we are when we are healthy, when our environment is properly clean, when we use a proper PPE, we 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 are less exposed, okay? When we are less exposed to germs and death, when we take care of ourselves and our use our, our, our equipment as well as our, our what's it called now uniform, okay? We 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 tend to have less diseases around us. We tend to we won't be vulnerable to even those diseases around us, okay? Okay, so um, a lot of benefits for benefit for hygiene and sanitation, effective learning, increase, all, all these are what we learn in school. <laughs> so hygiene promotion, um, can I, can, can I, okay. So one one very important one very important reasons why hygiene is um is important one one reason why hygiene is important okay can can someone tell us one reason why hygiene is important just one person why should hygiene be practiced yes that is the word why should hygiene be practiced in our workspace in our workplace among our audience, among our, even the staffs and those around us. Why? Why should it be practiced? Anybody? Because my name is Blasito. Okay, Blasito. Because an hygienic place that's very clean, it gives a kind of positive mental health to people around. It's able to work better. It's good to feel kind of relaxed environment. Many places probably clean. Okay, thank you very much, Balatito. A relaxed working space, even in our in our homes. Okay, so um, what's the name now? I see your hand up. She, I saw the name, but I can't find it anymore. Chine, but go yeah. ahead and speak, please. Okay, it's also important. Okay, to... Chine, yeah. thank you. Yes, it's also important because it will help us stay healthy and take us away from any form of infectious disease. Okay, thank you very much. Does it also improve um, work productivity when we're healthy? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Does, yes. It save, does it yes. save our money? It does. Yes, it does. Yes. It does, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there are a lot of things we could put in place just to stay away from, just to keep our staffs from getting exposed to disease. Maybe a carrier, a person may be a carrier, no symptom, okay? Then we start acquiring the disease, then you just see that it should not show immediately, but after after a while, you just say that um, MAK is sick, and then uh, uh, before you know it again, the next person is sick, and all this and all that. So what are those preventive measures? What are those measures we need to put in place for personal hygiene? Washing our hands. We see this our hands. We use it to touch a lot of things, a lot of places. From the door handle, to the elevator button, to the handrails in the office, the cupboard, the house where those books are. You don't know the other person would have who have used it. You don't know what kind of gems he or she maybe he could have coughed in and just you know just do like this. How often do we wash our hands? Okay, 
keeping our hands unclean, washing hands in soap and water immediately after, using the toilet. Don't be reminded. When you use the toilet, wash your hand, practice good hygiene before going to go and touch food, before going to go and also for the gala or whatever it is that you want to eat immediately. Washing hands and unclean articles or article that have been used for toilets or others, okay? I've seen the use of common or unclean eating utensils. So, well, and catching, drinking cups, brushes and combs and, and all that. How often do we, do we even put all these things into consideration? Our bed sheets are so well. You say so well, now not when I the bath, I the use them. I don't need to wash them every day, Jerry, or maybe like once or twice in a month. How often do we wash those things? Okay. He said, avoid exposure of other persons to spray. Please excuse me. Okay, so so as much as possible and washing thoroughly after handling a patient or his or her belongings. Wherever we find ourselves in the hospital, even in our offices, you're shaking someone, you're touching something, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't kill, you. it doesn't hurt anything. If after every 30 to one hour, you just stand up to use the hand sanitizer or preferably to wash your hands. Where do these gems hide in our hands? Under our fingernails. For those of us carrying some very nice, nice and long fingernails, how often do you clean them? The same hand you use in the toilet, the same hand you use in handling food, the same hand you use in coughing and all that. So it is important we keep our nails short and neat. Our hair, our dresses, okay? Even our body bathing properly, proper bathing and doing what's using roll-on, or body spray or nice perfume just to keep you, make you um, um, scent good, okay? Sorry. Okay, so. Cleaning your nails, uh, I've talked about that also closely related to washing hands. Um, hand washing does not ensure fingernails are clean. You see, it's not the same thing. You wash your hand doesn't mean that you 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 wash your fingernails. It's the same nails you put in your hand, in your mouth to eat. So as much as possible, keeping fingernails clean requires them to be kept short and brushed regularly, okay? So uh, we've talked about um, baiting also. Also, there's difference between make a go bath and I'm baiting, right? Don't just go under the shower and then just throw water. Sh -sh 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 and have a proper bait with soap. If you use sponge, good for you. Scrub yourself, scrub all those areas that you sweat and all that and, and have a proper, um, pay attention to the, if you are the fatty type of person like me, your neck, your arm, all those places where you have fold fats all over, you, you try as much as possible to wash them and keep them clean, okay? Our face also. As an important role in the prevention of eye infection, hygiene-related eye infection or cognitive, conjunctive and trauma, as much as possible, we cannot be, we cannot, um, we use our hands, we touch our face. So it is, it is also good that we wash our face to remove those infectious discharge from our eye. Okay, sometimes you just see you have some, what do they call it now, eye sheets? Yes, you have some things in the eye, you remove it, you wash your face because dust, <clears throat> soap and uh, clean water, okay? Okay, so so also our clothes and our beddings. You go out, I eat the type that after trekking from Modrele back to, to, to Mushi, you, the same clothes you use, you still just take it off. You didn't put it properly to sun or something. You didn't wash it very well with good soap and, and, and clean water. You just put it the next day, few. You put it on. 
your staff, how often do they wash their uniforms? How often do they, maybe they have sleeping where they sleep? How often do they change their bed sheets? All these things are very, very, very important to prevent us from having diseases. You would say, what kind of disease can you, can you get in, in, uh, in clothes or other things? But it is good that we put all these things, that we put them out for in sun, wash your clothes properly, there are some people they would wash their clothes in washing machine and leave it nine hours so that the machine can wash it, can dry it. And no, sun kills bacteria in the clothes. So always try to wash your clothes and put them outside the sun so that they can have some fresh air. Let's open our rooms and also have some fresh air inside it. Our windows, I mean. Okay. So. Okay. Clean clothes, wearing clean clothes. We've, we've, we've made mention of it. Provide not provide more than one uniform for your staffs, okay? Excuse me. Provide more than one uniform for your staffs. Help them to learn the importance of arranging their items properly. Their uniform, their shoes, whatever it is they use in carrying out their tasks, as much as possible, they should keep it safe and clean in their wardrobe if they have, or maybe hangers, okay? um okay so we've talked about um, um taking shower putting on clean clothes and footwear then um fingernails trimmed and and air covered if you, if you work in a place where they they deal with food you cannot go you cannot go in with this kind of fair you sometimes see in some restaurants you see them putting on uh, air mesh okay you, so it's just to avoid air falling into the into the food Okay, so um, place outside clothes or footwear in lockers, arranging their things properly, the things they use in working, the things you use also in your workspace is important to learn to arrange them properly. So now we're going to talk about um, housekeeping. What does it mean? What does it mean to have a good housekeeping? Okay, what are those, what are those things you do? When we talk about housekeeping, what's what are the materials they use in, in ensuring that they have a good housekeeping? All right. So I'll just read this quickly. Housekeeping applies to the surrounding and the roof of the establishment. Pest control starts at the boundaries. Our doors being, how well do we keep our doors being? How well do we keep our, our, our areas in, 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 ex, in essence, just to cut it short? How well do you tidy your space, your office, your room, your sitting room, your workplace? How often are they kept, okay? Doors are closed when not used, lights and dryers, all those, all, those, all those things we use around. How well are they? Are they um, us. Let's just keep it diary tomorrow. Does be how often do you throw away those or do you just stack them and keep them and let rats and cats run around because you cannot have a good uh, uh, um, tidy them properly? Okay, so what are the employees' housekeeping responsibility? To do an informal housekeeping inspection of the area on a daily basis and to rectify housekeeping hazard. To monitor that no items are stuck in or stuck in areas such as under fire equipment and electrical switch gear. Report faded housekeeping notices and signs. Always return tools to their correct place after use. Ensure that spill and other tripping or spin hazard are cleaned up and fixed or, or are fixed. Okay, so in my kitchen. In our in our warehouses, our things stored around. Okay, it is important that this all, all things we stack around and keep are, are done properly. Not where someone will just open the door and then the whole thing will just fall on their head because of poor housekeeping, right? So good hygiene, pest control practice prevents pests from entering the premises. If our place is clean. If your dustbins are always out, you would see less rats in your building. You would not, you will not be sharing your facility with insects and um, and rats and and reptiles or all sorts like that. Okay, protect food from pests. 
eradicate, eradicate infections immediately and indicate regular inspection. Fumigation also. How often do you do it in your facility? How often do you do it in your home or in your workspace? So, okay, so waste management, what kind of waste do we have? What kind of waste? Okay, what kind of waste do we generate? Um, Fidelis, are you there? Are you there? So what kind of waste do we generate? Yes, I'm, I'm here, but having some kind of some kind of connection problem. So, but oh, okay. um, so uh, we can waste generation. I could say sewage. Mm -hmm. uh, um, chemicals, um, and um, villages, and stuff like that. Just okay, okay, thank you, thank you very much. Episode, I'm a bit confused, sorry. <laughs> I deliberately called you because I saw you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, <laughs> All right. So, so um, thank you, Fidelis. Waste management. When we talk about waste management, we have some special waste. What are what are special waste, and what do they mean? So, any potentially infectious medical waste, hazardous waste, pollutant control waste, or industrial waste process. Any potentially infectious waste. Anything that can cause hazard, okay? Any waste, let me put it that way. Any waste that can cause hazard to our health, that can cause illness, let me speak that. Illness to us are those um, special waste. We have uh, asbestos, we have chemical, we have electrical equipment with potentially harmful components. We have fluorescent light tubes and energy saving bulbs. Um, vehicle batteries and other lead acid batteries. We have oil, refrigerants containing ozone depleting substance, okay, solvent and also um, pest, pesticides. All these, all these are examples of hazard waste that could cause harm to us. Treatment in involve physical, thermal, chemical, or biological process that changes the characteristics of waste in other, in order to reduce the volume, reduce the hazardous nature, make it easier to undo, make it easier to recover. In essence, how do we treat our waste, okay? We know, we know um, what do they call this thing? Recycling. There are companies whereby they have, uh, they have um, can, three dustbins, can, plastic, and paper, all this, and then um, medical waste, okay? Like, like we read earlier. All this, they don't mix them up. Even some, the other slide, bulbs also, our, 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 our lights. You don't just throw your bulb. You notice that your bulb is not coming on again, and then you just throw it into the bin. When that thing explodes, batteries as well, when, when that thing breaks or something, it has its own hazard that it can be contaminated to someone else, okay? Handling or moving of special waste. In other countries, in other countries, I don't know, maybe it's still working in Nigeria anyway, but in other countries, I know that um, all these waste are, apart from medical waste that I know it is not, it is not sometimes, it is not um, 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 mixed up with uh, other waste in, in they, don't, they don't dispose it the same way. Sometimes they burn some, sometimes they just um, recycle some if, if possible and every other, 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 other thing. So it is very important that our waste are separated and treated carefully, okay? Chemical and dust 
we could get from cleaning products, pesticide, asbestos, biological hazard, mold, insect or pest, communicable diseases. That's why we could get biological hazard. Ergonomy hazard, repetition, live in awkward position, okay? Every time you're not sitting right, you, you, you start noticing your back or something is paining you. Uh, that is because of ergonomy, the kind of chair we even use in our offices. Is it a type you can be able to relax your head or something? Physical hazard, we can also get exposed to that um, train, noise, temperature, extreme temperature, radiation, light. You notice if you go to the X-ray, X-ray room in the hospital, they will tell you um, keep off radiation, a lot of that, just to, to um, move us away from such um, hazard. Then um, work organization hazard, okay? Things that cause stress to us. Organizing our work, doing it right. If not, if we just want to be, anyhow, we, we start having stress, we start going through stress in our workplace. Safety hazard. Sleep trip and fall, what can cause it? If your office is not properly tidied, you have cables everywhere, tables, cables lined up everywhere. It can cause um trip and fall. You have water, you you did not clean it up, you did not have someone to go and tidy it up immediately. Faulty equipment, you know, this equipment is faulty, especially sockets. Let me use adapter. You know, this adapter is faulty, but then let me just manage it. Let me just manage it. And the day you manage it and the socket will do boom. And that is the end of it. You have a dark face and whoa, no ambiguity. So, so these are the possible hazards that we could be exposed to in our workplace and also around um, where we find ourselves. So health hazard in cleaning products, ingredients in common cleaning products have been li linked to the following ashwa, harming the brain, cancer, disrupting or acting of the hormones, breathing problem if if we don't use them. These are the health hazards associated to cleaning materials that we 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 use if we don't use the right um what's it called now materials. Okay, so then uh, a safety consideration, safe handling of cleaning chemicals, okay. We've talked about safety. We've thought we cannot emphasize so more. we cannot we cannot finish all the emphasis laid on safety consideration when we are cleaning among our custodians among we ourselves okay the caution um making sure that all, all our workers they understand those those signs there are a lot of signs that we see around them you can can we all see this danger sign can we see this danger sign on my screen okay so 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 when on a particular product or something there's a caution sign how much emphasis do you put on that to ensure that your staff understand that caution the product should be used carefully but it is relatively safe warning this product is moderately toxic danger the product is highly toxic and may cause permanent damage to skin and hide every product we use they have all this consideration they have all this safety consideration but if we don't, I repeat, if we don't put it into practice, if we don't read it, we would not be able to know what we even want to teach our, our staffs, okay? Or our custodian or, um, or even among ourselves, our families in the house as well. Okay, so PPE, control of last resorts, your special clothing, your high protection, your hearing protection, your respiratory protection, all these things and many more other equipment, your safety boots, hard hats and all that we have, we use them for different stacks. Every tax we have, have uh, uh, what's it called Different PPE. So it is very, very important that when we are putting on these PPEs, when we are making use of them, use it correctly. Let's use it correctly. Let's not just have PPE because it is important to have PPE. But it is also vital that the PPE you are using, you know why you are using it. Your employees are trained on why they should use it and how it should be used. Okay. So um, the last thing here is uh, okay assessment. So uh, what do you understand by cleaning and hygiene? Then uh, I mean every slide, every lesson always have its own assessment. So. 
this is the assessment for today's class. So I have um, nine minutes. I have nine minutes to take your, maybe there's anyone who wants to add something or a question so that we can just close the class for the day. If you have questions or there's something I said earlier, you want me to clarify, or if not, would I would just pick. I who have not said anything. Tunde Yakub, have you said something today? Okay, so so I will just pick three persons who can just tell us what they've learned and and then who's trying to say something, please. Okay, um Grace. Grace, can you hear me? Is Grace there? Okay. Okay, can that person please mute himself? Can you mute yourself, please? Holy Father, can you mute yourself, please? So, well, Stephen, can you can you tell us something about what you've learned today and your take home? Well, Stephen, are you in the class? Hello, I'm 